So today's uh, lecture topic is uh, anti-inflammatory drugs uh, that includes the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. To one moment. And we also will discuss the antipyretics and uh, other analgesic agents like the acetaminophen and silicoxin. Um, and so NSAIDs actually is the most uh, old group. So and uh, the prototype is aspirin made by Bayer. Uh, in the previous century, at the beginning of the previous century, and then includes a huge list of the analgetics because they are very effective and have many uh, indications for use. And then also are uh, selective uh, as and said. Uh, uh, Cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors, selectocacid is the most uh, recent research and also uh, most commonly used and say it include ibuprofen, keterolog, uh, meloxicam that is uh, slightly more selective than others uh, and Surindak also more selective. So and um, uh, besides that, there are there is also a acet aminophen or paracetamol in the states, and uh, it also has uh, the same mechanism of action, but is different by the chemical structure. And uh, the drugs that used to treat the rheumatoid arthritis include uh, the specific drugs and also uh, immunosuppressive drugs. And uh, also drugs for gout include the uh, urinic uh, agents. And uh, so the states are, are also used at the beginning of the treatment of re rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a disease when the uh, when the uh, immune system of the body will recognize the. Uh, Of the uh, the synovium or uh, that uh, the tissue that nourishes the bones as a uh, non uh, non body uh, part and then will start uh, an inflammation process and will uh, try to remove this uh, tissue. So. Uh, and inflammation uh, is a normal process that uh, is aid for the protection of the body from the injury that can be caused by the physical or trauma, chemical burns, uh, or microbiologic uh, agents. And the immune system tries to inactivate and destroy the invading organism uh, or remove the chemical or physical irritants and start uh, to repair the tissue. And after the repairment is complete, the inflammation usually subsides. But sometimes uh, the immune system can be activated uh, without the existing uh, uh, 
uh, existing physical trauma or any microbiologic agents and uh, that usually are uh, seen during the rheumatoid arthritis. So uh, the rheumatoid arthritis will uh, lead to the injury of the bone and uh, the cartilage and uh, then leads to the pain and uh, actually uh, the treatment in includes the anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive uh, agents and also the special drugs for remodeling the uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, and today we will discuss the anti-inflammatory agents including non-steroidal and also uh, the uh, if we have time, we will also speak about disease modifying anti uh, rheumatoid agents and also the drugs for the treatment of the gout and migraine. Uh, for the migraine, however, they are the same, like and states are also used for the migraine, but also like beta blockers also used for the migraine and many other drugs. Uh, and uh, prostaglandins play an important role in the body uh, uh, like uh, local mediators and uh, there are two paths of synth synthesis of the prostaglandins there is a cyclooxygenase pathway and lipooxygenase pa pathway so uh, Sorry, uh, like there are two paths of uh, arachidonic acid metabolism: cyclooxygenase pathway that will uh, uh, that will synthesize the enzyme called cyclooxygenase. So this is an enzyme cyclooxygenase one, and this is enzyme cyclooxygenase two. So cyclooxygenase 1 uh, is uh, usually regulating the normal cell processes like the gastric uh, protection, uh, vascular hemostasis and platelet aggregation while cyclooxygenase 2 uh, is usually uh, uh, activating the inflammation uh, and uh, also uh, the inhibition of cyclooxygenase 2 usually decreases the inflammation uh, and uh, that is why uh, the selecoxib, the selective cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitor is actually uh, more uh, safer because it will not inhibit or in inhibit less cyclooxygenase one that is responsible for uh, for protection of the gastric mucosa, for example, and other important functions. And then there is also a lipooxygenase pathway that. Uh, Produces leak leukotrienes and leukotrienes are uh, important and you, uh, in the development of the asthma, and that is why uh, there are uh, drugs that used for the treatment of the asthma are uh, leukotriene uh, antagonists like ciliotern, zafirlocast, and montelocast. Uh, but cyclooxygenase pathway is actually uh, usually induced by the inflammation that can be from the injury or uh, the um, microorganism and then uh, that is actually transcribed to the uh, uh, to the micro uh, 
to the uh, matrix RNA and then uh, the uh, the enzyme is synthesized and then the membrane phospholipids are used uh, to make an arachidonic acid uh, and then uh, are used to produce uh, prostaglandins so and uh, like both COX-1 and COX-2 are blocked by the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs and only COX-2 is blocked by the selective COX-2 inhibitors like silicoxid. So uh, this is the mechanism of action and uh, the most commonly used NSAIDs uh, is an aspirin and aspirin uh, is a traditional NSAID and uh, its uh, anti-inflammatory effect is seen in at high doses like 500 milligrams uh, and in low doses uh, up to 300 milligrams it can be used for the prevention of the myocardial infection and stroke and uh, the difference in the action of the aspirin is that it is uh, irreversible uh, and tag, uh, irreversible inhibitor of the cyclooxygenase activity. And aspirin, chemically, aspirin is a weak organic acid. So this is the organic acid group. Uh, sorry, this is an organic acid group. And this is a uh, 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 ester group, and, uh, and during uh, the reaction with the cyclooxygenase, aspirin acetylates uh, the enzyme, and that inactivates the cyclooxygenase one and two. And then uh, the uh, acetate is actually acetyl salicylic acid is uh, formed during this process. That is also has a uh, anti-inflammatory activity, but less than the acid, uh, acetyl salicylic acid itself. Besides anti-inflammatory action, the aspirin has analgetic action and uh, the, uh, because the COX-2 usually it plays a role in the inflammation and injury and by inhibiting this enzyme, enzyme the Aspirin makes an analgesic activity, uh, and all states are actually equal in the analgetic activity, and uh, usually they are effective in uh, light and moderate pain from the skeletal and muscular disorders, uh, and uh, catarrhalac. Uh, can be used uh, with, with the most severe pain but still is not much effective uh, and when the pain is uh, very uh, very severe or uh, is long enough then the third action is antipyretic action and fever is usually accompanying the inflammation process and uh, that is usually caused by the synthesis of prostaglandin E2 and uh, the states lower the body temperature uh, decreasing the synthesis and release of this prostaglandin and uh, the most 
aspirin itself is mm, not the the most uh, the most potent antipyretic uh, drug, but ibuprofen is much uh, more uh, effective antipyretic. So it's usually uh, used uh, when the temp the high at high temperatures like 30. A, uh, sorry, 39 and 40 degrees uh, Celsius. And um, the uh, the indications for the aspirin include actually the uh, anti-inflammatory and analgetic uses and can be used for the treatment of uh, different types of the pain. Uh, so, uh, and uh, the pain from the, including the pain uh, uh, from the rheumatoid arthritis, gout, and osteoarthritis, and also uh, the headache, the myalgia, arthralgia and also dysmenorrhea in women uh, after and during and after the menses and uh, all these conditions are can be treated with the uh, aspirin or and other anti-inflammatory sorry and other NSAIDs and uh, sometimes NSAIDs are combined with the of opioids uh, uh, and that usually allows to reduce the dose the dose of the morphine and uh, also the dose of the uh, aspirin uh, So antipyretic effect uh, is usually uh, seen uh, during the bacterial inflammation or the virus infection. Uh, so and also aspirin and ibuprofen and naproxen are used as antipyretic ag uh, uh, agents. Uh, and also aspirin should be avoided in uh, young patients uh, le less than 20 years old with viral infections uh, such as varicella or influenza to prevent the Reyes syndrome uh, that is syndrome that causing hepatitis with a cerebral edema that can lead to the death. That is why most pediatricians don't like the aspirin, so they prefer paracetamol or the acetaminophen, acetaminophen that is the uh, uh, international uh, name for the paracet, paracet, paracetamol. Uh, and Also, aspirin is used to inhibit platelet aggregation. Low dose aspirin uh, uh, inhibits the production of the thromboxane A2, and that uh, decreases the platelet aggregation and risk of the uh, uh, platelets blocks and also the stroke afterwards. And uh, that actually reduces the myocardial infection uh, events and engineered bacteria as well. Then also, uh, uh, aspirin also inhibits uh, cyclooxygenase one uh, and. 
this FX lasts about two weeks uh, because the platelets kind of synthesized uh, enzyme they don't have a nucleus so uh, and that is why aspirin is so effective for the as anti platelets uh, while other NSAIDs are not effective um, then uh, salicylic acid can be applied uh, topically for acne in the children and adults uh, and um, uh, in teenagers, uh, so some warts and uh, cones can be also be treated with a salicylic acid uh, or the met methyl salicylate that is uh, uh, applied externally to the uh, skin. And also, can be, this can be used for the sports props. So, uh, like usually that see, can be seen in cyclists and the, uh, oh, the sometimes from running also. Okay, so the aspirin is administered orally and is. Uh, they acetylated in the body and are uh, absorbed in the intestine uh, and uh, salicylates uh, cross the placenta and the uh, blood brain barrier and uh, then can also be absorbed uh, through the skin. Uh, and uh, and it is uh, uh, the aspirin is uh, excreted by the urine and uh, Uh, and the uric acid excretion can be increased that is why aspirin should not be used in patients with with gout and uh, uh, in patients that are taking the medicines that are for the treatment of the gout so uh, Adverse effects include the gastrointestinal disturbances and uh, like dyspepsia uh, and bleeding and that is because of the inhibition of the cyclooxygenase 1 production that uh, increases the secretion of the gastric mucosa and uh, usually the lower mucosa decreases the protection of the gastric wall and that leads to the bleeding and also uh, to the ulcer uh, and and also uh, uh, the Misoprostol can be used uh, for to prevent the ulcers uh, that uh, inhibits the proton pump um, uh, can be also used for the to prevent the ulcers like uh, omeprazole also it can be used and uh, besides uh, there is inc increased list, uh, risk of bleeding. Uh, and because of the decreased platelet aggregation uh, and that is why uh, aspirin should not be given one week prior to the surgery uh, and as, as well as other states 
uh, and uh, also it says prevent the synthesis of prostaglandin E2 and prostaglandin e I1, uh, I2 uh, that are responsible for the maintaining renal blood flow and that can uh, lead to the retention of sodium and water it may lead to the edema in some patients uh, and uh, that is can be uh, harmful for the patients with the uh, heart value or kidney disease then asp uh, aspirin uh, and SAIDs uh, uh, can have a cardiovascular protective effect uh, and uh, Uh, and selective uh, COX-2 uh, inhibitors are uh, increasing the risk of the cardiovascular events uh, usually, uh, usually by decreasing the person landing I2 uh, and That is why uh, the using other insects uh, than aspirin is not recommended in patients with a cardiovascular disease. So, and uh, other side effects include uh, the uh, uh, the production of the leukotrienes because decrease production of the uh, cyclo in cyclooxygenase pathway will increase the lipooxygenase pathway that will lead to production of the leukotrienes uh, and uh, that can be uh, can increase the risk of the asthma in asthmatic patients and uh, also Headache, tinnitus, and dizziness may occur, uh, and also the hypertensive reactions can be seen, uh, and sometimes allergy uh, results in the uh, in the form of the orticaria, bronchoconstriction, and angioedema. Uh, the patients with, with severe hypersensitivity to aspirin should avoid using all uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So the uh, toxicity of the aspirin is seen in the doses uh, in the plasma concentrations higher than uh, uh, 50, so it's usually 100 and higher, uh, and 150 is actually common. So, and uh, adverse effects are seen in like gastric bleeding, it's seen in low doses already, 10 milligrams. So, that is why this. Uh, adverse reactions cannot be avoided. Uh, in children uh, the aspirin is more toxic so even 10 grams of the uh, aspirin can lead to the, to the death that is why it should be kept uh, away from the children. Then uh, so this is actually the metabolism of the arachidonic acid in the platelet. This is a platelet and aspirin is blocking the cyclooxygenase 1 
that is used to produce pastime landing that is further is used to produce thrombaxan A2 that is vital aggregating factor uh, so and then states are divided to what like, can be divided to more selective and less selective like uh, less selective that includes more for the cyclo oxygenase 1 and that are usually most important one like Ketorolog and aspirin and also uh, ibuprofen and its derivative fluorbuprofen and naproxen and also more selective as cyclooxygenase 2 like salicoxib, peroxicam, diclofenac or meloxicam and etidolog so these are more selective uh, for cyclooxygenase 2 less GI disturbances but also less potent so uh, every uh, non-steroidal non anti-inflammatory drug has its advantages and disadvantages so the salicylic first group aspirin is uh, most inexpensive most uh, uh, investigated but common GI disturbances Diflunazole is less uh, GI disturbances but no antipyretic effect then uh, acetic acid derivatives derivatives include the indomethacin, sulindac and tolmetin so these are long acting uh, but they are very potent and toxic uh, uh, and there are some central nervous system disturbances then propionic acid derivative uh, include ibuprofen and its derivatives these have lower toxicity and better acceptance some, in some patients so most patients prefer ibuprofen and uh, naproxen is one of the most safe and safe then peroxicams include the meloxicam and peroxicam these are more selective so like meloxicam and peroxicam cox2 selective uh, phenomates uh, is a new one nothing is known about them and silicox is actually a selective cox2 inhibitor but because of the uh, only cox2 inhibiting no uh, it's uh, may, uh, is can lead to the myocardial infection and strokes uh, but less irritation than aspirin for the GI because will not re reduce the synthesis of the uh, mucosa that is uh, COX-1 uh, stimulated so for the pregnancy and states are in uh, pregnancy category C uh, in the first and second trimester and that is why acetaminophen is preferred uh, during the pregnancy and in third semester they should be avoided due to the risk of premature closure of ductus arteriosus so that is why it's better don't use uh, analgetics during the pregnancy at all so then uh, actually uh, or use only acetaminophen so um, I think that is it uh, 
So also let's also let's talk about acetaminophen. So uh, acetaminophen is actually uh, is has a common structure with the uh, acetyl salicylic acid and um, the and it's rather uh, safe drug and the mechanism of action is the same as in SAFE it inhibits prostaglandin synthesis and it has analgetic and antipyretic properties uh, it mostly acts at the central nervous system and it has a weak anti-inflammatory activity uh, it doesn't affect the, the platelet function uh, or uh, the bleeding time so uh, the usually acetaminophen is used for as analgetic and antipyretic uh, in those patients that complain for the GI disturbances and in those patients in whom prolongation of bleeding is not desirable for example before the surgery uh, and uh, also it's a drug of choice for the children with viral infections and chickenpox because of the Reyes syndrome uh, with the, that is seen with the aspirin that is usually used for these conditions so pediatricians love the uh, acetaminophen very much so and they have so many pediatric dosages like syrups the uh, uh, and uh, the rectal forms the uh, candles, rectal candles, and also solutions for injections. So, actually, so many ways of administration. And uh, uh, And usually, uh, acetaminophen is uh, metabolized in the liver, and uh, it has a uh, excited in the urine. So, um, and adverse effects. Uh, there are al almost no adverse effects. Uh, at low doses uh, uh, but in high doses the glutathione on the liver is depleted so the aspirin sorry acetaminophen is uh, has a toxic uh, intermediate that is uh, uh, reduced by the glutathione at therapeutic doses so and then the mercaptoric acid is that is non-toxic is released but in toxic doses the glutathione is depleted and then the acetaminophen is metabolized to uh, is uh, Connected with the proteins, and that leads to the cell death. Like the liver, our cells are damaged first. That leads to the hepatic necrosis, and that is life-threatening. Uh, and that is why, uh, and patients with the alcohol disease and the history of the alcohol disease hepatic disease and viral hepatitis uh, and that is why they, they, these patients are actually uh, in risk
uh, to, to have an acetaminophen induced hepatotoxicity, that is what should be avoided. The antidote is an acetylcysteine that is replaces glutathione uh, uh, and uh, that is can be used in case of the overdose. So I think that is all for today. Uh, thank you for your attention. Any questions? No, thank you, teacher. So, if that is all, then uh, uh, do you want to practice right now or?